very nice to have you on the program. You Thanks for what? coming. I am a big fan, and I'm really happy to be here. Oh, well, thank you very much for oh, saying please. that. <laughs> I, I think you're the best. Well, thank you. you After really that tooth thing, I lost him. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, the, I want to ask you about, uh, first of all, the, the thing that it's interesting, because people my age first saw you in Roots, and everyone knows you from that, mm -hmm. but uh, you've got this whole new generation of fans with the Star Trek mm -hmm. gig, mm -hmm. I like to say. And I was curious, first of all, that thing you wear over your eyes. The visor. The visor. Mm -hmm. Is that thing a pain in the ass or what? <laughs> I mean, what's the story with that? Actually, the truth is, it, it is painful. Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily in the ass, but we... <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. No, I'm, it hooks on to the ass, and then there's a strut that moves its way up. I had no idea. Believe it or not, believe it or not, uh -huh. we screw this thing into my head. What? That is how. Because you look at the show, and I'm always like an idiot looking at the show, like how does that thing How does attach? it stay on? How does they it stay on? They screw it into your skull? We screw it into my head. Now that's what you need an agent for. <laughs> <laughs> we want to give LeVar Burton this new role, yeah, but. Right. He has to have something screwed into the side of his head. The good news is you're in Star Trek. The bad news is... <laughs> <laughs> really? So how far do they screw it in? I mean... Just enough to give me a migraine. Oh, no really? more than that. Uh-huh. No more than that. So, like, but if you sneezed, it would stay on, right? It would right? absolutely stay on. That's the point. Okay. But you can see through it, right? Not at all. You can't see through it? 80% of my vision is taken away when I put that That thing on. is so annoying, I would think. It, it, so it, you just have has. to rely, like when you're eating food in the commissary, that you know you need someone to tell you, <laughs> it looks okay today, LeVar. Well, well Conan, I, I, I don't wear it off the set. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, uh, you mean you're not really that character? <laughs> oh, major bummer. But uh, what was uh, what was it like uh, uh, getting to gr coming to grips with the fans? Uh, uh, fans uh, for Star Trek shows, the original and the subsequent shows, mm -hmm. they're they're just so rabid. I mean, it's great; they're very loyal, but they're incredibly like devoted to probably to the point of distraction. Are they hard to deal with? Well, I I prefer to refer to them as as really enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. I, I, so rabid, ra <laughs> likening them to a a dog with a frothing mouth. It's, it's probably not a good thing. Well, I consider that these are the people that are putting my children through college. Bingo. <laughs> and, and so I, I, I tend to be nice to them. I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. they can be very intense, though. Very yeah. intense. I, 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 I don't do a lot of them, but you know about these Star Trek conventions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes. I actually, I, I've never been to one, but I, yes, I understand. They're very, they're quite intense. Well, there was, there was a woman once that came up to me dressed in Klingon garb, mm -hmm. um, a rather large woman that insisted that I sign her breast. Sign her breast? Sign her breast. And we all know that the Klingons, they have easily removable garb, garb. up top. That's yeah. right, that's and right. And so did you sign the, well, I was faced with this massive <laughs> <laughs> they were large. Breasts, yeah. Right. So you started writing a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Dear ma'am, <laughs> it's nice to meet you. I, I Continued on next breast. <laughs> I signed it. I you signed, signed it? it? I, any opportunity to please a fan. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. You're a good man that way. Let me ask you, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I said in the intro, it's, it's been 20 years. Mm since Roots, which is, which is amazing, because... Where were you? January 23rd, 1977, which was the first I was first in high school. It was my freshman year in high school. Wow. And, uh, and I remembered uh, it was just this giant event. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, there hadn't been, I don't think there had been a TV show, correct me if I'm wrong, it had been on consecutive nights, no. like a miniseries Roots like that. Roots was the second miniseries. Rich Man, Poor Man was the first, and it okay. aired in weekly installments. But Roots was the first opportunity to, to program in eight consecutive nights that had never been done Which before. at the time was this, was this stunning idea. I mean, today it might not seem strange to people, but that was very unusual. Who thought of that? Why did they think of that idea? The, 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 the programming genius at ABC behind that decision was that their thinking was, you know what, we like this, we think it's good, but it, it's about black people. Mm -hmm. And if nobody watches, we'll just cut our losses and be done with it in eight consecutive nights. And the final episode of Roots is still the third most watched television program in the history of the medium. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Actually, I, I believe our Christmas episode is number two for all time. I know it's in the top ten. I, I wasn't aware that it was two. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, 
people people must because it was it was one of those events where 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 people do know where they were mm -hmm. at the time you know what they were doing i mean i remembered watching it w with my brothers and uh and and i remembered you know that okay i was a freshman in high school i remember what i was doing do people come up to you sometimes and offer you know where they where were they or were. what they were doing yeah i had a guy come up to me once and, and actually this was in prison um you were in prison for a time <laughs> <laughs> well we were having the conversation in prison he was incarcerated I was there working I was on location mm -hmm. and uh, you were filming something in a filming prison something in prison okay filming something to set the record straight I appreciate thank you <laughs> good <laughs> you just got to make sure you know I was in prison for a time uh-huh <laughs> and uh, avoided the showers and uh, <laughs> and this <laughs> but you had your visor to go yeah Oh my around. God! Uh, he this this was a paper hanger, a guy who made a living uh, writing bad checks in shopping malls, and, mm -hmm. and uh, roots aired in January originally uh, in in '77. And, and this guy told me that he actually cut his hours short. He had a whole crew of people that were out in the malls Forging doing checks. Credit, credit card forgery and and bad checks, and he would pull them all out of the malls early so everybody could get home. To watch roots. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. A criminal, a career criminal, it, it, cut things short. That's everybody a, watched roots. Yeah. Everybody that, uh, now tell us about. Uh, you've written a book. I don't know how you find time to do these mm. things, but uh, aftermath, a novel of the future. Mm. I actually, I, I, I wrote this. I started this project just after my daughter was born, mm -hmm. two and a half years ago, and I wouldn't get any sleep anyway. So. Oh, that's just, 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 that's an interesting idea. I'm up just, already. I'm up. I might as well use the time. Baby's crying. Well. That's right. That's <laughs> Most right. people don't think that way. Well, All we, right. We do it my house. Uh huh. <laughs> so, uh, so you wrote. The, well, tell us what the book is about. The book is actually a, it's a it's a cautionary tale. I, I call it a science fiction thriller. And uh, I I begin with the premise that um, America is destroyed. The last best hope on earth has has fallen. Mm -hmm. um, the New Madrid fault in the Midwest. Uh, erupts with a 9.1 magnitude earthquake and NASA collapses and creates some economic factors that contribute to the fall and uh, the race war is really the straw that breaks the camel's back. Mm -hmm. America is engulfed in a civil war and uh, and that's just the first that's two pages. That's an interesting idea. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first, that's two, the pages. first two pages. Yeah. Then, it gets, then it really gets quiet. <laughs> Everyone just has coffee for the rest of the book. <laughs> that was wild, man, those first two pages. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, that 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 sounds uh, that sounds fascinating though. People should check this out. Aftermath, it's it's out everywhere. It is book. in the bookstores as we speak. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming by. It was really nice I, talking to you. I love being Lavar here. Lavar Burke, everybody. Very nice to meet you. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around.